This tutorial shows how to generate an email from a non-fatal database exception. This job loads some contacts from a spreadsheet into a Microsoft SQL Server database. When I run the job, the first pass runs and five rows are written. I also have added this, which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, this is a component that also runs after that database load. Now if I run this job again, I'm going to get an error because there's a constraint placed on the database. The business name has to be unique, and I just inserted five unique records, and so the second pass fails. Now what has happened here is I'm not logging that as a fatal exception. I always have the option in these output components to simply die on an error. But in this case, what I'd like to do is to identify the condition of the records uh, that weren't inserted and to email. you also notice that the processing can continue on after that. So if it's a acceptable case to have that insert fail, uh, you can continue processing. But you may also want to be noti uh, notified of that, and that's the purpose of this, uh, this video. What I do is, from the database component, there are a number of variables available that you can interrogate. And I use a warn component. The warn component is going to generate a message. I can specify something specific in this component. And the warn will be caught by a T log catcher. And the log catcher has the T warn checked here. And in the last run, the condition that I've um, established for the Microsoft SQL output component was met. The warn was started and caught by this log catcher. And what happens in my exception handling sub job is I write to a file, a T file output with delimited. And then in the T send mail, I pick up that file. And send it via email. The way that I do this is I use it. There are several variables uh, that are available after the TMS SQL output runs. And I use a run if connector. I'm going to trigger run if. And I connect up the T warn. And the T warn is going to be run if this particular condition is not met. There's also updated, deleted, rejected. There are a number of other variables here. You can use the code complete to get a, a listing. And what this is saying is that if there were no records inserted, then I'm going to throw this warn. So when five records came in and no records were written, I've identified that as a warning condition. Now the logic in a if statement can get as complex as you need it. If you needed to correlate it, say, with the number of lines in a file or something, you could keep track of these other variables as well. So when you're working with your uh, jobs, I always think it's a best practice to put your exception handling in a separate area, and that way it can be reused. Because even though this is a simple job with really only one data flow, as you start to get a number of these, say, writing to a set of related tables, uh, you want to have the warning conditions tucked away like this so you don't have to keep repeating uh, a number of handlers. <laughs> Thank you.